Hi everyone, welcome to part three of my Intel series where I'll be talking about the downswing and some concepts that you can think about to help you swing it more degrees into out. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. So when talking about the downswing, I'm gonna cover three concepts. The first is gonna be about how to transition from the top or initiate your downswing. The second is going to be about the position of your lead arm in the downswing. And then third is about your arms and your wrists. So how you initiate your downswing is somewhat related to what you're doing in the backswing. So I'll try to connect some concepts that I'm talking about in this video to my part two video, um, which talks about the backswing. In part two, I talked about the, the fact that you never, ever want your upper body center more into the target than your lower body. Okay, so that puts you in what's called that reverse pivot position. Um, and, and if you get your body bent this way, it makes it very, very difficult um, for you to swing it more degrees into out. So when a player gets to the top of their backswing and they initiate and they start to move their upper body more ahead of their lower body, the second thing that you want, I want you to pay attention to is just where their weight is in their feet. And a lot of people that move their upper body ahead, they tend to move their hip more away from the target, and they actually keep more of their weight or too much of their weight into their trail foot. I never want to see people leave too much of their weight or pressure in their trail leg in their downswing. That's another really big one um, that will, will encourage you to swing it more degrees out to in. So the players that swing it um, slightly in to out always have their weight moving forward, okay? Never ever either, either staying stagnant or moving more into their trail foot kind of in the downswing. The player that demonstrates the most amount of rotation from the top suffers enough lateral movement to the lead side and also tends to have um, very little side bends. And their shoulders and hips will tend to rotate more level to the ground. So if you are someone that's suffering from an out to in swing and you have this idea that you need to rotate really aggressively from the top, then it's very likely that you're going to need to build in more lateral movements towards the target and also more side bends. So I want you guys to understand that the downswing is a mix of these three movements, but we have to ensure that you have the right blend or the, the right amount of these movements put together that allow you to swing it into out or, or do basically whatever you want in the downswing. A very good feel that I like to describe to a lot of people is when they get to the top of their backswing, and assuming again that their, their upper body is kind of more centered over their lower body, what you wanna feel like is as you're pushing your weight into your lead side, you're basically keeping your back and your butt facing the target longer in, in, in your transition, okay? So if I was adding a lot of rotation, you see that my, my back and my butt would kind of turn away or face more away from the target. But I want, what I want you to feel instead is you're going to keep your body closed or less rotated in the downswing for a longer period of time as you push into your lead side. So you can see my, my body staying closed longer as I'm pushing in more into my lead side. So I'm, I'm adding more laterals into my downswing. I'm slowing down the rate of my turns. And if I push my hip into the target, you can see that my upper body is staying more behind. Uh, my lower body. So by feeling that, pushing your the lead side of your butt or your back into the target, I'm building in or I'm training myself to build in those two movements that you're most likely lacking in your downswing, the lateral movement and also the side bends. Okay, now the second topic that I want to discuss with you guys is just the position of your lead arm. When people get to the top and they demonstrate an out to in move or an out to in swing, what happens is that they have their arms and hands move more out and in front of them. Okay, so kind of halfway down into the downswing, you see that the hands are not very deep behind the body and the hands just get more out in front near the toes. Okay, so if your hands are kind of out in this position, you can probably see from this camera view um, and in relation to my face or neck, the shaft kind of runs through the, the base of my neck or face, okay? Now that's a good visual of someone that's coming down uh, very, very steep. And when that happens, it, it's very, very difficult uh, for them to get the club swinging, you know, a few degrees in out. They're gonna have to make a lot of adjustments and reroute things. So what I wanna see instead is when they 
transition into the downswing that their hands or lead arm stays more across their chest longer in, in, in the in transition and in part way into the downswing. So what that allows you to do is that that allows the hands, basically the entire golf club to stay behind your body. Okay. And the longer that the club can stay behind your body, then the more degrees the club can can be delivered on an intel path. So how that relates to what I just said previously about the slowing down the rotation of your body in the in transition, that will help keep your lead arm across your chest longer. That'll help keep your hands behind you and the club head behind you. So if that can happen, then all of those things combined can help you swing it more degrees into out. But we never ever want this lead arm to kind of get away from the chest too early and get really far in front of you um, too early before you hit the golf ball. So how you can check this visually is on the way down, if the, if the lead arm is staying you know, across the chest enough or the hands are staying behind the, the body enough, you could probably see that um, the shaft of the club will run through pretty close to the bicep or right through the bicep of my, of my trail arm. Going through the lower part of the bicep is also fine. That'll also indicate that you're probably going to swing it um, a couple of degrees on an in to out path. You just don't want it to kind of run through above your bicep or kind of through the shoulder or any, any more in front of that position. So the third and final topic has to do with your wrists and how you're bending or positioning your trail arm in your downswing. Now, if you guys want to have a bit more detail on what the trail arm does, um, then I can make a separate video about that. But um, for this video, I just wanted to point out that we don't want this the elbow really high. We don't want to position the trail the trail arm kind of more in an internal rotated position. Okay, so that would mean on the top we don't want to get the elbow being more internally rotated like this way. Okay, we want to actually maneuver the trail arm a little bit more so kind of externally like this. Okay, where where you're losing an arm wrestling match as opposed to winning it. So if I do that slowly once again. If you can see when my right elbow is really high, that basically doesn't allow my wrist to kind of get the shaft um, position more flat. Okay, when I get my right elbow more inwards, you can see that my wrist kind of turn and I'm able to position the shaft a lot more flat with the club head a lot more behind my hands as opposed to it being kind of in this position. Right, my, my hands and wrist kind of can only stay very, very steep or position the shaft very steep. Whereas I kind of do more in this position, it can get a lot more flat. And that's gonna allow um, or promote or make it easier to get the club swinging in and out. So I hope these concepts have improved or bettered your understanding of the downswing and, and can be something that you guys can apply to help you swing it more degrees in and out. And if there's anything that you guys want me to talk about in more detail, um, then please let me know in the comment section. I can always, try to make a, a more specific video about a specific topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any more questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K Moss, where you can DM me and inquire about my online lessons. I will leave a link to my website in the description box below as well, where you can see all the details. But other than that, I'll see you guys in part four.